morning we are talking about the covenant speaks to us daily. When God's word speaks to us daily, he had a good plan with what he's speaking or interrupting whatever we're facing in the natural. And the interruption of God's good will, God's good plans, God has a life and a life abundantly and a good one planned for you. Satan tries to come up with hopelessness, destructive words, hopeless feelings and thoughts of giving up depression and whatever it might be. But let me tell you, when God interrupts it, he says to you, I have got a life a good life plan for you. And it's a life with abundance in it. And it's a life with hope and a good future. And when you say, I agree, you've just joined yourself to the plan that God has. And that means whatever claim Satan had, that claim is broken. Because you've chosen life and not death, not the destructive force that is released. And today we're looking at part six. And it's the second fold of the Holy Spirit we're looking at today. But it is part six we de- we're dealing with today. But it's the second fold of the Holy Spirit in your life we're looking at today. And you know what is beautiful is that when the Holy Spirit has dominion over your life, when He is the one that you give a superior a uh, uh, rulership in your life to teach you all things, to impart all things that God wants you to know, and to empower you. You are going to be a powerhouse. Because with the Holy Spirit, you become a powerhouse. You become so addicted to good news. You become absolutely driven into full potential that the Holy Spirit has. And whatever Satan tried to remove your joy by, it is just canceled because the Holy Spirit is far greater to have in your life. Because he says, I'm your advocate. I am your healer. I'm your teacher. I'm your counselor. And he's your best friend. And he's much more than that. So when you join your life with the Holy Spirit, you join your life with the full potential of everything God has plans for you. And He needs to be poured into our lives. You'll see on the picture that it is when He pours His fire into your life, you cannot be silent about the Word anymore. You cannot be silent about miracles God is doing. You become a spreader of good news. You become absolutely one that can't be silent at work anymore. You want to tell them about what happened in church yesterday. You want to tell them about how many got set free, how many got delivered, how many the Lord had an appointment with. One morning I was standing and the Lord said to me, I have an appointment with you today. And I thought, what appointment does he have with me today? And I've I felt the draw more, more to just go into my office and close the door. And sitting in the presence of God, the presence was there instantly. And God started speaking to me about plans he has for the future. And you know, when the Lord speaks to you about the future plans he has, no one can bring another plan across and introduce it to you because you will not follow a secondhand plan. You'll always follow the first-hand plan because that is where his blessing, his provision, and his direction is. So the first plan is always better. It comes well armed with knowing where to from here. And you know that nothing that the enemy brings across your path can destroy or remove what he has said. So having the Holy Spirit poured into your life, you'll never be the same. People around you will say, you, you're radical, you're over the top, I can't keep uh, in tune with you or whatever it might be, but that's good news. So on the day of Pentecost, the mention of the Holy Spirit's fire and his infilling was a very sure deal. And God wanted the uh, disciples filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you were a follower of the cross, if you believe Jesus Christ died and paid for your sin, (coughs) you absolutely, excuse me, in a good place to be filled by the Holy Spirit with 
evidence of tongues. And the evidence is telling the world who you are in Christ Jesus. So in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 1, it says, And in the fulfilling of the day of Pentecost, they, the believers, were all with one accord in unity and agreement. So what is the requirement to be filled in unity and agreement with the Word of God? So put your hand on your heart, Sam, in agreement and in unity of God's plan. I open my heart to the agreement today to walk in unity of the Spirit of God. Amen? Praise the Lord. So agreement and unity is a requirement. The same in your household. Agreement and unity takes all the strife, all the torment, all the confusion out of your house. So if you agree and you sit and you tangibly see each other's angles and you decide what will we agree upon, confusion immediately is out of the house. Harassment is moved out of the house immediately because Satan works where there is no agreement. Satan causes harassment, he causes destruction, he causes war, he causes um, uh, confusion, and he wants you to miss the blessing God has got for you. So what does he use? He uses the torment that comes with disagreement. Amen? But the Holy Spirit filled all. Now remember, Pentecost was a promise. And they were there to tarry until they were all filled. Like we tarry in the Spirit in worship so that everyone can receive a touch from the anointing. And when the anointing starts to flow, you, you become aware of the presence of God that is in the place. And when the presence of God comes, it comes to dispel, remove, and, and um, uh, bring freedom and vindication. So the Holy Spirit filled all in verse 2. There was none of them left with unbelief. Because remember, they came expectant. And a good way to go to church is to be excited and expectant. What is God going to do today? I'm open to the Spirit. I'm expectant. I want to come and receive from the Father. And so in verse 2, and suddenly a sound came out of the heaven as borne along by the rushing of a mighty wind. That was needed in that day. Because remember, they'd never really experienced the infilling of the Holy Spirit at that point. So when the rushing wind, mighty, came into that building, it, it came and it filled all the house where they were sitting. So wherever you're sitting, it filled all. And it's got nothing to do who's sitting in the front or who's sitting in the back. It filled all that was sitting in that room. And there was a mighty rushing wind that filled the house. And tongues were distributed. So remember, immediately tongues were distributed because they were there for that one reason, is to be filled with tongues, filled with the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So remember it says in verse 3 that the distribution took place and tongues as of fire appeared to them. So why did the appearance come? The spiritual eyes were opened. The eyes were opened to the move of the Spirit that came in the form of tongues on everybody that was in the room. And it said being distributed, distributed. And it sat upon each of them. Now tell me, where did you read that God does things differently to one set of believers and differently to another set of believers? What is God's heartbeat about tongues? He wants everyone to be awakened and to be opened to the Holy Spirit's baptism. And when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit and your spiritual eyes are opened to healing, 
to uh, the quickening of the fruits of, um, of the Holy Spirit. You know, a lot of people's lives are changed and transformed. But listen what happened in verse 4. The Spirit gave them utterance. So we can first see, you saw the process that I spoke about. They were gathering together in unity and agreement. And that unity drew the Holy Spirit in. And so what happened next? We saw that the very next part is they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. The next part, the next instruction in verse 3 is that received tongues were distributed. And tongues as of fire appeared to them. So the appearing means their eyes were open to the tongues, the fire that came down from heaven, and it was distributed upon each and every one. Then the next thing that showed up, they started uttering the language of the Holy Spirit. And they were all filled in verse 4 where they were filled of the Holy Spirit and began to speak so they weren't silent. You can't be silent when the utterance comes. So the utterance came and they began to speak in other languages, languages that they never uttered before. As the Spirit gave them utterance. So who gives you the utterance? The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit gives you the utterance to speak. And you can speak in all different languages. If you had all the nations present, there would be interpretation. There would be an understanding of what language you are speaking right now. And that is how orderly the Holy Spirit is. Isn't that beautiful? Now, something else came as well. Power showed up. The Holy Spirit gives power as well. So where are you going to get the power from? The power to pray, the power to praise God, the power to believe. It comes from the Holy Spirit. So can you see why he's our best friend? In Luke 4 verse 14, it says, Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And news of him went out through all the surrounding regions. So that is not a quiet matter. When the power of God comes and you hear of this one's coming to visit, which is full of the power of the Holy Spirit, everybody wants to be there. We used to have fellow, different fellowships. That's where we picked up quite a lot of the disciples that are with us. Um, when we went to the Vol, it was a gathering of just people fellowshipping on a Friday evening. And there was uh, quite a few people that are in the church today still and members and have been followers of the cross ever since that time. And so when the fire came down, we used to praise and worship and pray, pray. And as we would pray, the anointing would just start coming down. The power came down. And as you saw Pastor Dean today, Pastor Dean was sitting with Nathan. Nathan was a small little boy. He was a tiny little boy like this. And Christopher, they were young little boys. And Pastor Dean and Sandy, they were, they, before they became pastors, they were there. They were just hungry for the word, hungry to hear what has the Lord got to say. And then the anointing would come and Pastor Dean would be flat on the ground. He would be vibrating like this. His legs, his whole body would be vibrating under the power that was released upon the group of fellowship. So I tell you, fellowship in the spirit is something very precious because God does a new thing in our lives. And he brings his plans to pass by being in the right place at the right time. And so, yeah, you can see Jesus returned in the power. Note that it didn't say with the power, because with would be outside. But in means inside of us, in the spirit. And it's a huge big, it's a capital S spirit. That means it's a big spirit. Holy Spirit is a big spirit, a big part of God. And the news of him went out 
through all the surrounding regions. Whenever we got to Paris and we had our camps, there would be expectancy. The very first thing you would see is some of our precious followers of the cross were on the Friday camps and they would arrive expectant. And you could see it was tangible in the atmosphere. So then we started building the atmosphere. Friday night, we would build, we'd all have supper together, and then go and gather together at the altar. And we would start with praise and worship. And you could literally feel the atmosphere build with the anointing. So the anointing would show up because there was expectancy. And so expectancy ignited the power. And the power started showing up. And you know, we used to have um, gatherings until about 12 at night. And no one felt tired. They would arrive early to make sure that they get a good spot close to the altar. And they would wrestle to get their seats close so that they wanted to catch the anointing quicker. We would have pastors from all different ministries come, expectant. We even had the blah, 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 arrive and uh, all sorts of different anointings arrive. But let me tell you, when the Holy Spirit started moving, prophecy was ignited, ministry was ignited, people started falling over, people were lying all stretched out just on the carpet or on the floor and the anointing would just move. Very little of man is needed when the Holy Spirit shows up. Holy Spirit will always have his place. So we're to be respectful of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will touch his people. Holy Spirit will only use your mouth to speak because that's what the human beings uh, sometimes hear they don't know the voice of God at the beginning. And so there would be good news traveling all over, as we heard here. And news of him went out through all the surrounding regions. And then by Saturday morning, you'd see no one start. They had very little sleep. And they had good fellowship overnight as well. When they went to their rooms, they couldn't stop talking about what had ignited in the meeting. And the next morning, they all ready for prayer. And there would be the gathering around the altar again for prayer. And then it was breakfast, and then the first session would start. And then there would be a short break for tea. Sometimes we wouldn't even break for tea. And then we would have lunch. And then after lunch, a short little uh, 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 rest. But I tell you, the joy was heard all over the camp. People would get up to some mischief, and they'd all be laughing. And it was our first in the early days in, uh, I think it was 2002, somewhere there. We had our first introduction to our weapons. And that's where we got our uh, chauffeurs. And I so desperately wanted a blow my chauffeur to make that lovely sound. And I laid on my bed on the Saturday afternoon and I was practicing to blow the chauffeur. I did everything. Have you ever tried to blow a chauffeur and it's the first time you're doing it? Your cheeks puff up with air and your head gets quite red because under pressure you're trying to get the sound out of the chauffeur. And eventually you're trying so hard and your head is like really on fire and your skin is sort of really hot because you've been doing it all wrong. But you try your best and then you would lie there and you go, doo, doo, because you think, well, okay, maybe I'm getting a sound out of it by now. And that's what you would do, baby steps at the beginning until the Holy Spirit showed up. And then when you get that first sound in the horn, I tell you, there's nothing that can stop. Holy Spirit had to rescue. And he rescued us. And that was the beginning journey of commissioning all the weapons. And if you really want to get yourself a weapon, remember, God would send the believers to war with only their weapon. 
and you think it's probably a good gun and some pellets or uh, some real bullets or whatever it might be. No, it was just a chauffeur or a ram's horn or it would be um, an antelope horn, the, the thin little black horns, and they would go to war with that. Jericho walls came down just by them blowing on the trumpets. I mean, everything collapsed. The whole city was given to them by silencing them for the first few days. And all they would do is march, march around the building, march around the high walls of Jericho. And then when they were given the right to blast their trumpets and to scream and shout, all the walls came down. So is God good? Absolutely. And is God powerful? Absolutely. So that's why the good news will always go out. You cannot be silent about it. You cannot be religious about your faith at all. So what did God do? He allowed for the Holy Spirit is a promise of power to every believer. It says in Luke 24 verse 49, the Amplified Version, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. So is it a promise from the Father to each and every one of us? Yes, it is. But he says, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endured with power from harm. So where does the power come from? It comes from high. It comes direct from Father God. It's a promise to every believer because it says it's a promise of my Father. So when you pray for someone to be filled with the Holy Spirit, pray for the promise from our Father to be ignited upon each and every believer. So the first thing to ask is, are you a believer of the promise of the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And when you understand that it comes from there, you don't have doubt and unbelief like an armor showing up that blocks the power, the promise, and the infilling from harm. Because doubt and unbelief becomes an armor that blocks off the anointing. So when you find yourself doing that, then rather repent. Say, Lord, forgive me for my doubt and my unbelief. I open my heart to receive the promise from my Father, because remember, it is an M and an and a F. My Father. It's not an earthly Father. It is our Heavenly Father that will send it to you and endure you with power from on high. So the power of God is not just going to show up and hover around. It's there for a purpose. So also when you become aware of the anointing, remember, ask God, what is the purpose of your anointing, Lord? Is it for healing? Is it for igniting someone's understanding? Is it to baptize someone? What is this anointing for? And when you start finding out what the anointing is for, you become a vehicle like the glove on the Holy Spirit, and you move and you do whatever He's instructing for you to do. Then we are doing this upright and doing it with the right heart, and God will show up. Amen? So what does the Holy Spirit do? Holy Spirit wants to impart gifts into us. And the gifts are amazing. We've been at um, ministries out on invitation. And there would be different pastors we don't even know that are there as well for the night's uh, function. And we would be standing and praying, just holding hands. And suddenly one of the pastors we don't even, didn't even know, he would suddenly rattle off in tongues and God would drop the whole message in my heart to verbalize publicly. And interpretation of tongues. Often when I stand next to someone and they're praying in the Spirit, I'm hearing the message of what is God saying. 
and interpretation is confirmation of what is the Holy Spirit saying to the church. So that is a good thing. So trust God for the gifts. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 4 says, there are diversities of gifts. Did you see diversities? They to divert the power, the anointing in different directions for all to receive. Isn't that beautiful? Are you one of those that is all to receive? Yes. So I'm to receive whatever the Holy Spirit wants to impart in my life today. But he says, but the same Spirit, same Holy Spirit, diversities of gifts, but same Holy Spirit, sent by the Father. And it says in verse 5, there are diver differences of ministries. And you can see it as people come to receive. I love to see everyone function and fully operate in the giftings God is developing in them. A lot of ministries do not want anybody to lay hands on one another. They don't even call their pastors up to come and minister because they feel that the responsibility is only resting on them. But I believe that we are training, equipping, empowering the saints to operate under the anointing. And that is the best because our times are close where we have to be fully functionable, all of us with the anointing, so that we can impart and set the captives free. That's what the anointing is there for, is to set the captives free. Amen to that. God doesn't want us to be um, all ensnared, and he doesn't want us wrapped up and, and really have chains around our lives. He wants it, us to be free in him. So he says in verse 5, there are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. Now, isn't that exciting? So we're not a blueprint of each other, but it's the Holy Spirit is imparting in you the vehicle he wants to use to bring people to the fullness of Jesus Christ. And when we come to the fullness of Jesus Christ, we are more than conquerors. Nothing can limit you. Amen to that. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit imparts these gifts. Here in verse 6, it says, And there are diversities of activities. Listen to that. Different activities. Amen. But it is the same God who works in all. All of us, same God who works in all of us. But verse 7 says, but the manifestation. Now you've seen already in the ministry that there's manifestations that take place, which confirms this is the Holy Spirit at work. It's not any of us that are uh, real boffins. It is just the Holy Spirit that is at work. He's busy bringing change, busy bringing renewal, busy bringing freedom. And when the Holy Spirit has his way, we're in the best place we could be. So he says, manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. And there's a prophet for the prophet of all. So we all get to profit when someone is operating under the anointing. Because change will come. Freedom comes. Prosperity is released. Uh, wisdom is released. I tell you something you could be struggling for years with. In one second in the presence of God can be stripped off of you and you're a new person. That old thing is gone. No longer your stumbling block. Wouldn't I think there's all of us have something in our lives we don't like about ourselves. And maybe it could be attitude. Maybe you get cross too quickly. Maybe you get discouraged too quickly. Maybe you're just too critical. Maybe you just like to keep an eye, evil eye on others and you've got too much judgment on you. 
whatever it might be, which causes you to stumble. It causes you to get into trouble. Trouble you don't need to be in. And so we can see that we can either set each other up with our flesh, or we can bring change through our obedience in the Lord. There are a lot of people in the world that set other people up by asking questions that brings the worst out in the person to defend themselves. Right? For instance, if you go and you uh, go to the Navy and you go through the blue or oh, the steel training, I mean, they have to break the person down to start reprogramming the person to be that real sort of fire gun wherever they want to send you to bring change. And the same happens when they're raising little children in certain uh, ungodly uh, 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 governments. They train them by brainwashing them. And they reckon they only need that child up to the age of 11, 12. And they've already, they've got brain control, mind control on the person. And so think about that. Isn't that sad? Isn't it better when the Holy Spirit is in control? Because he will not take you down. He will not destroy your life. He wants to build you up. And he wants to empower you so that you can do all things through Jesus Christ, not be limited in that. We're still talking about the impartation of the gift. We're looking at verse 8. Are we there? Yes, verse 8. It says, for to one is given the word of wisdom. I love that. Because when we wise master builders... We're not building on quicksand. So wisdom is the principal thing, right? The book of Proverbs says. And what does the book of Proverbs say about wisdom? In all our getting, get understanding. Because if we've got wisdom from above and we have understanding from above, we really can manage life well. And he says, through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge who is aware if you operate under the word of knowledge? I could be in a place and people walk past me and I have knowledge that just walks past me. And immediately I have to ask the Lord, what do you want me to do? But you, you get so used to hearing and communicating with the Father without even opening your mouth. And then you know, okay, Lord, I'll pray for that person or I will take the message that you have. And you know, when you do that, they come in touch with the heart of God. Not you, the heart of God. That God loves them with an everlasting love. And that he wants to see them helped. Word of knowledge. Also walking past a person, you can see brokenness and you know the reason why they're broken. Fear. Condemnation unworthiness, torment, rebellion, pride. And immediately when you have the word of knowledge, you can pray more effectively. You don't have to look in the dark for something that is happening. Manipulation. Sometimes you're on the phone, you're listening to the message and you're hearing the heart of all of this is manipulation. That's the word of knowledge. So that you know what you're dealing with. Now, that is the Holy Spirit wanting to make you more effective so that you can help more effectively. It's not for you to look good, but it's for the effectiveness, for the freedom, for the souls. Amen? And then in verse 9, it says, To another faith by the same Spirit. There are people that have got faith for anything. They can believe God to the ends of the earth for a good thing, for a God plan to come to pass. And it says to another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Isn't it beautiful and so important to have all the diversities of the gifts? You could be operating under all of them at times. Uh, we could be in a crusade and these pastors that get the first uh, the invitation to come forward. And among them, you can see the torment. You could see that the minute you even just mention the word of Jesus, the eyes start turning backwards. 
is because there's a demonic force that's in control of their lives. But the anointing is there to break the control, break the grip that holds them in captivity, that steals their joy, steals their strength. And that's what Satan does, is he tries to steal your strength and steal your, your um, uh, victory that God wants you to have. And so we can see in verse 10, it says, To another, the working of miracles. Who loves miracles? Who loves legs growing out? Who loves kidneys healed? Who loves whatever the enemy meant to harm the person? Stopped and change and renewal come. Who loves ears to be opened? That the deafness goes. Blindness restored. Healing upon the skin where there's been uh, uh, eczema or all sorts of things. The gifts of the working of miracles. And remember... We've, in um, our other building, we had a precious lady that came that uh, had breast cancer and she'd had quite a bit of flesh removed and certain areas, I, I didn't know it, she didn't tell anybody, but she just came up for healing and the Lord said, put your hand, as a woman, put your hand just on her chest and as we did that, I felt the flesh grow under my hands. That's the miracle taking place, filling whatever was missing, cut away in her breast, in her chest, and that was removed. So that's a working of miracles. Another working of miracles is when a, a short leg grows out. We had another uh, case where the lady came with huge big platforms like this, but they, one was more than the other, but they were high. And to line it up, the one that was high like that and the other one was short, so the one leg was much shorter. And we started worshipping and we were praying. We were trusting the Lord for miracles to take place. We started seeing that her leg was growing out. And I think, Pastor Shami, you were there as well. And so we walked over to her and said, please stretch your legs out. And suddenly it was tough. Suddenly the leg, the shortest leg grew longer. And then it grew, it was like a little bit like that, that was needed, because we took her shoes off her feet. So it was only a little piece like that that still had to grow, and it stopped. And we thought, what now? And you know her thought pattern, but all my shoes are built up. I'll have no shoes to wear. And the healing stopped. You know, if God's going to grow your legs out, will he not help you to get shoes? So, I mean, for a thought, say so you'd rather walk with a shorter leg because you think, I'll have no shoes to wear. And so guess what? She left with her shoes. One leg was a little bit shorter and she couldn't wear them anyway. Because they were, one was extremely bold up and the other one was not as bold up. So the shoes were of no use to her anyway. And you know, it's the same as um, a precious lady who one small finger was completely called over like that. And so pray for me. And so the prayer started taking place with a, a small finger straightening. And it's not us, it's the Holy Spirit doing it, granting her the petition of her heart. And so it grew, and guess what her mouth said? I don't believe it. And zoom, the finger went right back into its cool, shorter and cooled completely over. And many have prayed for her after that, and it never straightened like it did that day. Because there is still doubt and still unbelief in her heart. And those seeds of doubt and those seeds of unbelief is blocking the blessing. So if you become aware of when they lay hands, open your mouth and say, I receive it in Jesus' name. The minute you agree with God, you will have what God wants to give you. But if you allow the negativity to say, oh no, oh no, no, whatever, it's not going to work for you. 
because the Holy Spirit shows up and it's up to us to allow him to do what he can. So remember, it says the, another prophecy, prophetic word, an utterance that is given that brings direction, not doom and gloom. You see, prophecy from God will always build up. It will always direct our feet. It will not put doom and gloom on us. So God's not going to publicly put you down in front of people. He's not going to publicly call out whatever is in the closet to put you down or expose you. Because that would not be building you. So always remember, don't be afraid of prophecy that comes from the Lord. Because he says to another prophecy, and it's to build up, remember, it's to empower and direct. And he says to another discerning of spirits. Now that's what I spoke about. You discern what is going on without them saying what is going on. I could sometimes be standing around people and the Holy Spirit will say, pray for them. They have a problem with the flesh. They're in pornography. And you don't have to shout that out. You just go back and you pray. You say, Lord, strengthen them. Open their eyes of understanding. Point them to your truth. Show them that there's a better life. Show them that Satan wants to steal their salvation. That's your kind of prayer you would pray. Because you want to bring them close to Jesus. Because he's their Abba Daddy. And if we're shouting, oh, you're in pornography. How does that help the person? It exposes the person. It hurts the person. And will God ever put you down in front of people? Not at all. God is a God of love, not of putting you down in front of people. He's merciful. His grace is new every day for us. So discerning of spirits will never be like that. I was once sitting in a, a, a meeting where ministers were, and there were intercessors near us, and I knew them, and they also had a prophetic leg. And before the meeting started, I had taken some people with, and I knew them very well, and I knew what they repented for because they came and they said, would you agree? And I want to lay this down today. I don't want to be part of this anymore. The Lord is opening my eyes and showing me that this I have to lay down. And we were sitting there, and they'd been restored. They'd been restored for quite a while, a good eight months. And so I invited them to the meeting so that they could be empowered. And suddenly this intercessor shouted from behind us, I pick up masturbation. Masturbation. Oh, the terrible spirit. That was not godly. That was a familiar spirit not a spirit of discerning. It was a familiar spirit that was shouting that out and there was nothing orderly about that. And so I just took her hand and I held her hand because I know she gave that to the Lord. She repented for that. That was not her portion. So if a familiar spirit came and manifested, that was not God at all. And I immediately corrected it. I said, whatever is under the blood is under the blood indeed. Whoever the Lord sets free, he sets free indeed. And there was a silence that came over the place. So don't ever expose someone's weakness. That is not anointed. That's hurting, harming, and destroying someone's life. That's not the love of God. So to desire giftings to expose someone and to embarrass someone is not God. It's a familiar spirit operating. And that familiar spirit is not commissioned by God. It's the devil that wants to put shame 
on a person's life. So always remember that Satan will always try to put shame on people. So if you expose someone's weaknesses publicly, you're putting shame on the person. You are not helping the person. You are harming the person. And all you're going to do is you're going to put enmity, dividing lines between you and the person for putting them to shame. And that is not God. That does not build. It destroys unity. It destroys relationship. Are you all hearing me this morning? I really have to emphasize that if you're exposing someone publicly and love is not the motivation and you're not building up as well, you are destroying the person's lives. Used by Satan to bring destruction. That is not God. So always remember God loves you so much that he was willing publicly to go to the cross for our lives, for all of our wrongs. And he didn't make us grovel on the ground and grovel on the ground and unworthy and grovel, grovel, grovel on the ground. He publicly, he defended himself not. He went through the process and even when he was questioned, he defended himself not. So remember when we walk in love, you don't have to defend yourself. God says, I am your defender. I will defend you. And that's what you stand by. You don't have to defend yourself. When someone brings an accusation against you, you take it to the Lord and you wait for God's deliverance and his freedom because he's merciful and he's gracious and he's well able to bring a change of tide in our lives. Is that right, family? Amen to that. Praise the Lord. And so the next part is to remember to another different kinds of tongues. If you listen nicely, with the tongues that are ignited in the ministry, you'll hear different tongues. You'll hear tongues of, of equipping. You'll hear uh, tongues of, of love. You'll hear tongues of fire. You'll hear prophetic tongues. You'll hear different kinds of tongues. If you are under pressure and you um, are raising someone from the dead, or you're praying for, you'll have a different tongue than just waking up in the morning and say, good morning, Holy Spirit. There's peace in it. Thank you for equipping me this morning. Thank you for your wisdom this morning in my life. Thank you for ordering my footsteps in favor this morning. Thank you for opening up doors today that no man can close. Thank you, Jesus. There's love in those tongues and gratitude and edifying and building. But when you're praying for someone that has just died and lost their breath, you'll be going, because this is an urgent matter now. Is that not right? He won't be going, oh, this is not a building up session. This is life and death now. <laughs> And let me tell you, if you've got to pay a bill or you've got to get out of a, a sticky spot and there's water rising and you've got to cross that bridge, you will not be going, Oh, thank you, Jesus. You'll be going, You'll be keeping your eyes on that bridge because <laughs> you've got to cross over and you need power now. You need the anointing to take you over. You're going to be giving instruction to the atmosphere. And that's the tongues of fire, giving instruction to the atmosphere that takes the destructive force out of the way. Who agrees with that? Amen. If you've just, you heard my testimony one night, and I praise the Lord for his, his faithfulness. One night I had to run down from my upstairs uh, rooms, run down the stairs, and suddenly I went tumbling down the stairs. And when I came to the one platform, I felt, oh, my toe. I felt it. It was like fire in my small little toe, my second toe. 
And I, the first words that came out my mouth is, nothing broken, nothing missing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm complete. Nothing broken, nothing missing. And I got up and it was fire. And I thought, don't say it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm healed. Thank you. There's nothing wrong. And I was going like this down the, the, the stairs. I was holding on to it. And I, I prayed because one of my dogs wanted to get downstairs outside. And it was an urgent matter. So I was like half asleep when I was going down. And my toe caught one of the beams. And that's how I went tumbling down. So I got up and I got to the front door like this and I'm saying, nothing broken, nothing missing. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing wrong. I'm complete. I've black nothing. And I'm not saying pain sees, um, toes line up. No, I'm just thanking him for what I've got. And I got up the stairs. Now I'm trying to get up the stairs back to the room. And I got into bed and oh, the sheet was like a ton of bricks on my toe, but I chose not to look at it. I chose not to even look at where the pain was coming from. I laid in bed and I just prayed in the spirit and I said, thank you, Jesus. I have healing. I'm complete. I'm lacking nothing. The next morning I got out of bed and I could stand on my foot. There was nothing wrong. There was no pain whatsoever. But boy, did I have a navy blue, red toe that was broken. But I could walk. I didn't have to go and get slippers or something out. I could walk as if nothing was wrong. So the evidence was, appearance was there, better word. The appearance was my toe was broken. But I didn't walk with a broken toe. I was complete because my mouth kept on shouting what I want. And what Jesus says, you can, he says, by the declaration of your faith, you shall be established. He didn't say might. He says, you shall. He says, by the fruits of your lips, you shall receive what you say. So it was very important not to say what I was feeling. Uh, but I had to say what I want, and it showed up because the next day, that night when I went back to sleep, as I say, when the sheet just dropped on my foot, I felt, oh, but I just kept on declaring, declaring the pain did not have my mouth. The discomfort would not come out of my mouth, but the victory was mine the next morning when I put my foot out of my bed. And I've got a very high bed. Um, the kids call it my marshmallow bed. Anyway, when I put my foot out of my bed, I didn't think, oh, let me try this. I just put my foot out and there was no pain. There was no discomfort. It was only when I put my shoe on that I saw in what condition the appearance looked. But God's faithfulness will always open up the way for you. So what does he say? Different kinds of tongues. Another, the interpretations of tongues. And you see, that's what he says in verse 11. But one and the same Spirit works all these things. All these things. One and the same Spirit works all of these things. Distributing to each one individually as he wills. Isn't it amazing? So who wants you to operate under the giftings? Holy Spirit. Father God wants you to have the gifts. Now is the time to start trusting the Lord. Which gifts have you given me, Lord? I want to unlock these gifts because then I can manage ministry more. I can manage my life better. If I have your full impact of your anointing working through me, I can do all things through Jesus Christ that strengthens me. Family of God, this is really something to really trust the Lord for. Because if you trust the Lord for this, you could really live a satisfied life, lacking nothing, being complete, and have what you say. So then we have a look at verse 7. But the manifestation in the New King James Version is given to each one 
And listen, you prophets, for the prophet of all. So it is your neighbor sitting next to you. It is, it is really for their prophet. It is the person who sits behind you. It's for their prophet. It's for your neighbors. It's for your family. It is for everyone that you love. It is for their profit that this manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit is given to. So it's not for us to look smarty pants, but it's for us to benefit everyone we come in contact with. So when God sees that your heart is to serve with the gifts, you will be endured with the power because your heart is right and you're receiving it from Him. And that's what He wants for you. So we close today, we are to desire for the Spirit to fill you and not for man. So don't put your eyes on man. It's not man that can fill you. It's only the Holy Spirit. Don't ever find yourself in a place and walk under legalism and limit yourself in any way because the Holy Spirit doesn't want to limit you. He wants you to be empowered by the anointing that can only come from above. So desire that the Spirit will fill you and not man. And when we look at that, it is the fire of God which changes your heart. And when your heart is changed, you know what happens? You have a heart of flesh. The love of God is found in your actions. You can see the characteristics of Jesus in everyone that operates with full gifts. The love of God is their motivating factor. It motivates you to pray for someone. You want to see everybody free. You're prepared to pay the uncomfortable, maybe time slots, maybe expectancies, all of that, even counsel, because you want to see them free. You want to pray for whoever because you want to see them free. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do is fill you up until you're so ready and so pliable and you carry the heart of God. We know that the Word of God says, trade your stony heart and receive a heart of flesh. Now, what is a stony heart? You don't deserve, you're a bad person. Why must I pray for you? Oh, that's not God. God doesn't work that way. Remember, he never showed anyone away. Do you remember when they found Mary Magdalene and they pulled her out of that room after they found her in adultery? He didn't say, you bad woman, you slut. Not at all. He never name branded her. In fact, when he saw that the guys were mad and they had stones and they wanted to stone her, he says, anyone that has got no sin in their lives, cast the first stone. And you know what? As all of us are in this building, there's not one of us that have not sinned. There's not one of us that haven't got weaknesses or strengths. But you know what? He went down on the ground and he started writing in the sand. And it was never publicized what he wrote in the sand. But you can put one and one together. That as they looked there, they were probably exposed. You slept with her on Wednesday. You slept with her on Friday. And what about you on Saturday? So when they did, they dropped their stones and they walked away. But what was Jesus' love motivation? He says, women, where are your accusers? Where is your accusers? And she looked around and she says, there are none. And he says, neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. With other words, this lifestyle, give it up. Don't go back there. Because basically, he didn't see her as the practice she was involved. And do you know that Mary Magdalene was used in the last hours at the Last Supper, and she prepared him for burial. She took her expensive oil, 
And with her hair, she wept on his feet because she found mercy and grace from the Lord. And when she found so much love and acceptance, she never wanted to go back to her old life again. Because the love that she received from him and the identity she received from her changed her whole life. In fact, actually, it gave her new beginnings. It gave her a new identity. And she never sinned. And it irritated the men, the guys that had issues. Why do you allow this woman to cry on your feet? Why do you allow her to waste all this expensive, expensive uh, perfume on you? And she dried his feet with her hair because the mercy and the grace, one encounter with the Lord changes everything. One encounter with the mercy and the grace of God will change everything about your life. No longer legalism. No longer pettiness. Don't want to waste time on nonsense anymore. You just want to get on with it. And you want to live your best life right now. Is that not what we want? Amen to that. So come, let us pray. Don't miss next week, impartation. Next week is impartation time. Remember the Holy Spirit will bring a fire opportunity to test your heart. There will always be fire opportunities. Will you leave that job where they're mocking you or they're putting you under pressure? If you know you're supposed to be there, be there. Because you're doing it for Jesus, not for yourself. And remember, that that is in you is far greater than what you're facing in the natural. So protect the anointing in you. That's what God wants for you today. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bring the church to you today. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you that you have ignited a desire in our hearts to be filled to the full with the fire of the Holy Spirit. And we know that the Holy Spirit's fire is not just there for ourselves, but the impartation of your gifts and your anointing is there to break yokes and set the captives free. We so desire the freedom for everyone's lives. We so desire a good future for each and every one. We don't want anybody to be shipwrecked. We don't want anybody to fall away from the loving kindness of our Father. And so we ask, Lord, this day that you would place within us a heart of flesh, not a stony heart, but a heart of flesh where we will be like Jesus, love like Jesus, and be gentle and kind like the Holy Spirit. We thank you for filling the children of God today with more of you and less of ourselves. If you're in this place and you want less of yourself and more of Jesus, would you stand to your feet? If you're tired of the old and you yearn for the new, open your heart this morning and just raise your hands to Jesus for he wants to fill his people with the right heart. I hear the Lord saying, for I've called you, I have set you apart and I'm anointing you right now to be more like me more like my heart, love more like I do, says the Lord, and I will give you the treasures of your heart. I will open up ways for you to travel by. I will cause for you to stand tall, not intimidated, but tall like me, says the Lord. My authority will pla be placed upon you, and you will speak my words with clarity, and you will speak my words with power. And change will come. Change will follow you wherever you go where you commissioned, says the Lord of hosts. 
My strength is made perfect in your weakness. And no longer will you be ashamed. For I've called you. I've anointed you. I've appointed you. And yes, great, great will be the destiny of wherever you go on my instruction. Many will come and see and taste and drink from my rivers of living water as you ignite my word and you speak my word out boldly. Change, deliverance, freedom will take place and a new day will be their portion. And everything of old will be stripped off of them. Everything that is not of me will be changed and removed for where their hearts are, their treasures are. And this morning I'm calling, where have you placed your heart? Is your heart on me? And is your expectancy of me? And as you stand and you do what I commission, your obedience will always be rewarded. For commissioned, you are. Called and set apart, you are. As you've laid down the foolish things of the world and you've laid down the condemnation of the world and you've laid down judgment of the world, stand before me and I will fill you with more of me and less of yourself. I commission your feet to be ordered by me today, says the Lord. Ordered by my word, ordered by my commission, and many will receive a new day experience, victory in their camp, because you're willing to speak what I say, willing to do as I command, your obedience will be rewarded, says the Lord of hosts to you today. In Jesus' name, amen to that. If you would like to sow a financial seed into Teresa Westerby Ministries International, download the Zapper app from the App Store. Scan the QR code on your screen and sow a financial seed into the ministry. Thank you for contributing financially and helping us reach more souls for the kingdom of God. One word from God changes everything. Thank you for joining us today. We were so excited to have you. And remember that one word from God changes everything. Would you consider today to sow a seed into this ministry? If this word has blessed you, remember someone has sowed a seed for you to receive today. And as you go forth, let us know how the word impacted you today. And I believe with all my heart that we can enlarge the kingdom of God by winning souls daily. God bless you from Dr. Teresa Westerby. I say shalom to you today.